Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Skybees. How are you guys doing today? How's life? So what is the plan for today? We need to do a little bit of bee breeding. It's slightly an irritating process because for instance in order to get a diamond bee, I'm going to require coal and cobblestone, right? But there's a 35% chance of getting a diamond bee. There's also a chance of getting emerald and lapis. Oh, this is steel. What? Then why am I making a coke oven? Anyways, let us see if we can get the diamond bee. Please? Yes! We have you. That was actually very lucky because I have tried four times in order to get a redstone bee which is a combination of dust and sieve. There's only a 20% chance of getting redstone. Let us see if they are ready for breeding. Come here. You too. Give me redstone. Please. Nope. Fluorite. I don't really need fluorite. I have to wait another 5 minutes until these guys are ready for breeding. That's not very efficient. But in any case, we have diamonds. Oh, and by the way, the apiary is so efficient <laughs> that look how many centrifuges I need in order to process everything. And that amount of coal that you see is just from one bee. And there's even more over here. Although, now that I'm relatively rich on honey, maybe we should have more than one dust and more than one sieve bee. Because I need the sieve guy for other ores and he's not being very cooperative. Are you going to be cooperative this time? Please? No. What is that? Skeleton bee. You come with me. Come on, guys. One redstone. We already have one fluorite, so this guy is extra. One very important thing that I forgot is that our diamond bee does not have a flower. It needs a block of diamonds. Because I just noticed he's wandering aimlessly. Give me redstone, please. Nope. It's okay. We have one more chance. Redstone? Nope. Blaze and Creeper. <laughs> the problem is they also gave me Fluix and Pigment. Pigment gives you Glowstone. I was hoping that we can at least get an Iron Bee, but sadly, this guy is Prismarine. Another Pigment. I have a feeling that we are approaching this the wrong way, because there's a percentage of getting the bee that you want, and it's taking a stupid amount of time. You are Fluorite. I can make a breeder for the apiary, and I can upgrade it using additional breeders or time modifiers. Maybe that is the way to go? It's okay, we try this one more time, if not, I'll make the breeder. I went up ahead and made a breeder and installed it in our apiary. There seems to be some upgrades. This one reduces the maximum breeding time and this one adds another breeder. So if I put sand and sieve and give you the flowers, will you give me iron? Oh, you need a jar. I know that you're going to give me a bee, the question is I don't know which bee you're going to give me. Oh, this is so slow, uh, we might as well try to get the redstone bee as well. Oh, it gave me Prismarine again. You know, I do understand that for Redstone, there's a 20% chance, so I'm getting just unlucky, but for Iron, it's a 70% chance. And getting Prismarine is only 30%. Oh, we have Redstone. Nice. So I can mark you off. And we also got Iron. Okay, this is much better. Maybe I should make some upgrades? So this apiary breeding system is actually really neat. We almost have all the bees that we need. The way that it works is that you put the bees that you want to breed, you put the flowers that they want, and you put a jar over here. Like so. As long as you have flowers and as long as you have the jars, they will continue to breed and put the output in the storage. And you can also easily upgrade your storage with a storage upgrade. The main bee that I wanted was gold. Silver I will keep, iron, uranium, prismarine. And these are the guys that I also don't need. So here's what I want to do. I want to take our coal bee and the iron bee and I want to use them in order to get steel. I think there's a 100% chance so we just give it one jar. Yeah, it's 100%. Another mutation that I want is between gold and netherrack. And that has a 100% chance of giving me netherite. We have the steel bee and soon we shall have the netherite bee. But you should remember that I can't use them because we need to put one block of each one in the apiary. Here is netherite and here is steel. And I guess we're done with bee breeding for today. Okay, now that we have access to the bees that we want and they are generating a decent amount of resources, let us focus on applied energistics. My pure crystals are doing garbage. Have they even grown? Yeah, 31%. Okay, this might sound a little bit weird to you, but the way that we start with applied energistics is by farming cactus. Oh, and it grows instantly. Fine. Then I'm going to put a botany pot for cactus. And the reason that we have to start with cactus is relatively simple. We need to get steel. And how do we get steel? Well, obviously we do have a bee, so once we get one block of steel, we don't have to do this anymore. But we need a blast furnace. And the recipe of the blast furnace requires a magma block, which requires magma cream. And magma cream requires slime balls. The easiest way of getting it is just cactus in a manopool on top of an alchemy catalyst. Therefore, 
let's try to get some blaze rods for the alchemy catalyst. It's so dark, I didn't see him. Found some blazes. We have four pieces. That's more than enough. And I'm not going to push my luck. I'm just gonna go back home. So we need two brewing stands, one mana pearl, and one alchemy catalyst. And I think we can just put it under you. Yeah, we should be fine. It's not very safe, I know. Oh, you are slow. It takes 1 minute and 20 seconds to give me one. It's fine, we shall increase our production by having four more. So that would be one every 20 seconds. In the meantime, we can also focus on immersive engineering. We unlock the quest line and we get the book. Now we need to make alloy kill. I know the quest is complete, but I want two sets and not just one. There you go. Two alloy kill. One resource that we need in very large quantities for extended crafting is called black iron ingot. It does not have a complicated recipe, it's just basically iron and black dye. But obviously we need it in very large quantities, so the sooner that we get it going, the better. I did not check the recipe, we can still make it using a pestle and mortar, right? Yes, we can. Since we have two alloy kilns, we are going to go with two stacks. And did you guys give me iron? One stack. It's okay, I have a little bit over here. Oh, this is not that slow. Okay. You know, it's a good thing that I have noticed, because your quest book does not recognize your previous actions. We already have a coke oven, but it didn't count. Now it counts. So here is one more quest, and you want cold coke. That is another quest. I should have gotten a bucket, but it's okay. And in the meantime, we have 35 cactus. I'm not sure if it's enough. <laughs> oh, we don't have enough blaze powder. That's a problem. I think I need seven magma blocks, right? Because each recipe gives you three blocks, right? Let's see if I'm correct. Oh, oh, we need two more. Damn. And I need to sift dust because we don't have blaze powder. Okay, let me gather some resources, then I'll be right back. I have gone through 10 stacks of dust and I think we just got like 27 blaze powder. That is enough for the moment. And I just remembered that we had the blaze bee and that gives you blaze rods. Okay, sieving is fun. But I have some issues with food, and I noticed that Cyclic gives us honey apple. And look at the saturation, 20. Nice. We have 35 more cactus, and we are going to convert all of that into magma cream. And here is 27 blast bricks. We just need to have one block of steel, and then we're good to go. The black iron is also ready. And now, according to the book, we need to make quartz enriched iron. This is from refined storage, but we need it for some crafting. Oh, one thing that I wanted to test was to see if magma block is better than torches for generating lava. Yeah, it's heat too. Not the best. It's fine, I don't have that many choices and I need lava. Oh, and by the way, I did make a quantum tank because if you look at the recipe, it's nothing. And it can hold like, I don't know, 2000 buckets? or 2 million buckets. I know that there should be a better way of getting lava. Cause the issue is I need to get a lot of sky stone in order to get certus quartz and charge certus quartz. And the only way of getting it other than mechanism which is not possible for us is to have a bucket of lava for each and every one. There is a recipe for a uranium block from immersive engineering and let's see if we can craft it. We just need the dust and that should give me a uranium block from immersive engineering. You stay the same? Okay, let's see if it's any better. Heat 5. That is better. Oh, and by the way, in the meantime, I think our steel is ready. And all we need is just one block, and the rest is going to be done by our B. So I'm guessing we don't need you anymore, right? And before I forget, let us get a few buckets of creosote oil so that we can get treated wood. Because we need to make an engineer's workbench so that we can make the metal press. Yeah, you see, we need the blueprint for molds, which is easy peasy. We need paper. It's okay, from sieving dirt, we should have some sugarcane. Yes. And since we don't need cactus that much, we plant sugarcane. I find it really weird because, you know, it's uranium block. What's the difference? Couldn't they get the ore dictionary correct? It's okay, I'm hoping that by the time that we get enough steel plates, we will also have enough lava. And here is the engineer's blueprint for the molds. Just waiting for some more steel to be prepared so that I can make the actual metal press. I know I keep coming back to the lava situation, but it's turning into something very urgent. The thing is, I just realized different material have different values. For example, cobblestone gives you 250 millibuckets, crushed endstone gives you 200 millibuckets, and netherrack gives you one bucket. And I do have a netherrack B. Uh, I just have to find him. There's a teeny tiny chance <laughs> that I have thrown him away. It's perfectly fine. We can breathe him one more time. Because there is a 100% chance. Because otherwise getting netherrack is quite a pain. You need more lava. 
I just wanted to mention a few points, that poor netherrack bee was inside the apiary and I forgot, so now we have two of them. Secondly, netherrack does give you more lava, but unfortunately, the burn rate is the same. So it's just like slightly more efficient. And the final point is in order to make a heavy engineering block, you need electrum. We have been to the nether, so making conveyor belts is not a problem for us because I did some bartering. And if I have done everything correctly so far, this should be our metal press. I think, yes, I was correct. And it is hooked up to power, cool. The mold goes in, hopper for export and hopper for import. If I give you one steel, you should work. Perfect. So process everything, I guess, including the black iron. So ladies and gentlemen, now we can start crafting. Most of the recipes in Applied Energistics requires us to get into extended crafting and get the basic and the advanced crafting tables. For making them, we need a lot of components and all of them require bioluminescence, which is relatively expensive. For the first tier one, I think we need eight. We need to convert four of them into a basic catalyst. And there you go basic crafting table. I think I need to make another one so that I can upgrade it to the advanced, which is not very expensive because it only needs gold instead of iron. I just wanted to tell you that I'm running into an issue. We're producing much more than we consume and I really don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Actually, I kind of made a mistake. You need two basic crafting tables to make the advanced one. There you go. I think crafting wise, we're okay. To craft everything in Applied Energistic, we need the machine casing from Refined Storage, which does not have a complicated recipe. So for the moment, let us make six. And that is an advancement. This is why we needed steel plates. And finally, we come to our main issue at hand, which is getting Skystone. We need lava and Skystone dust. And notice that each bucket of lava only gives you one. I'm going to start with only saving 10, so that we will see how lucky we are, or unlucky. We are lucky we got one charge. For making different types of press, we need 16 in total. It's not that bad. Actually not 16, for silicon you need five, so 17. This could be something that I'm going to regret, but what if we convert this one into a Fluix crystal, and by one I mean two, and make a charger? Applied Energistics has its own power system, but I did not find an energy acceptor in this mod pack, so I'm assuming that it works with RF. I could be wrong, but we will see. Oh, it has power. Then we can charge these. Ladies and gentlemen, Applied Energistics is going to happen today. Applied Energistics might be in reach, but we have a fair bit of grind to do. I decided to make a Certus Quartz B, which is a mutation of dust and silk, and he's going to provide us with quartz. And in this way, I don't have to sieve. Thankfully, we also got a nether quartz bee, and I need to use him too. The process of making pure crystals cannot be accelerated, so we have almost three hours to kill. There is no energy acceptor in this mod pack, and I cannot operate crystal growth acceleration chambers, and that is the problem. So until we get to the controller which requires pure flux crystals, I cannot operate growth acceleration chambers. But you might notice that we have ton more other things that we need to do. Let's get the presses first, silicon, logic, engineering, and calculation, so that they are off the list. Then we start getting some inscribers. I think we need seven, right? And I'm hoping they do accept normal RF. Do you? Yes. Then if that is the case, we can start making some silicon. And I want to start making some of the processors, but how do we automate them? Can I rotate you? Yes. It's not something super complicated. What I have done is that I have flipped the inscriber so that we're exporting the items from the side into the inscriber and we're extracting it from the other side. This last one is going to be for calculation press, which we cannot use it at this very moment because it needs pure Certus crystals. But technically speaking, we can make the other two processes. Where does the redstone go? Okay, good. Then silicon goes from here, which goes on the bottom and engineering goes from this side. Now that we are going to make processors, can we make some ME storage components? That requires a dissolution chamber, which is not that bad. We need to make a press mold for gears so that we can make some diamond gears. And the hopper doesn't work. Oh, you showed up. What do you have to sell? Protection five mending on breaking five. Obviously, we buy everything. Everything which is worth it, I guess. Dark oak. Yeah, why not? Anyways, let us get back to the main task at hand, which is making the dissolution chamber. We need plastic. We need the PT machine frame, which needs the runic altar. And thankfully, that is something that we already have. It's four iron, four oak, and one redstone. Do you need living rock? I don't know. Yeah, you do need living rock. In that case, we need a little bit more. Okay, I am actually going to make as much as I can because it's a painful thing to craft. But for the moment, we have three of them. 
We have the diamond gear, we have the PT machine frame, what do we do about the plastic? I'm not gonna make latex because we do have a rubber bee and he's going to give us tiny pieces of rubber. Yes, he will give us tiny dry rubber, 9 will give us dry rubber and if we smelt it, we get plastic. The rubber bee is a mutation of steel bee and slimy bee and slimy bee is a combination of zombie bee and snowball bee and both of them can be crafted. We have one rotten flesh. Hello? Did I forget to sleep? We sleep. Nope. Come on. Okay, I did manage to sleep. Good. Here is our zombie bee. And for getting some snow, all we need is a bucket of water and a pure daisy. Or at least I'm hoping that's how it works. Yes, water turns into snow block. And here is the spawn egg for a snow bee. There is a 100% chance of getting a slimy bee. You come with me. Slimy bee has a weird texture, but it's okay. As long as it works, I don't really care. Oh, and by the way, the flower that we have to use for him is oak. Oh, you need to have space. Otherwise, it will reset. Yes, rubber bee. You go inside and I also need steel. You go back inside. Perfect, we have rubber. So making the dissolution chamber is no longer a problem. How do we provide it with honey? Can I just right click with honey bottles? No, I need a honey bucket. Yes, you can right click with a honey bucket. Okay, that's fine. I think automating this is going to be painful, but we do have a 1k storage cell. Oh, and it takes two buckets. Ooh, can I pump the honey from here? It's fine, that is something that we can figure out later on. We're not in a hurry. And just to see where do we stand on making the controller, here is the sky block, here are the engineering processors, and here is the steel plates. We're just missing four pure Philoix crystals. That's it. Although on a positive note, I think we have everything in order to make two drives. There you go. I cannot make the storage cell itself because the storage housing requires pure surface quartz. And if I'm not wrong, we still have like two hours. Yep. Yeah. The rest of the process cannot be rushed and I think we should use this time productively. At first I thought automating this is going to be a challenge, but you can lock the input. That makes it super easy. Anyways, if we want to use our time productively, what are we going to do? We need to get a little bit more into power and start getting an energizing orb so that we can get a better reactor as well as a better centrifuge. I think we are going to go with one hardened tier reactor because getting the energized ingot is not that difficult. It's just 10,000 RF and it gives you two. Another important functionality is that we can use blocks of steel in order to get centrifuge casing and therefore we can make a better centrifuge. We're going to start with five energizing orbs and we also need the energizing rod. Nice. We can make five. Can we also upgrade it to the basic tier? Five blocks of quartz. And I have to do the upgrade one by one because they don't stack. Obviously. Inventory management is very painful. Can we get some decent cables? Yes. As well as one wrench. We put the rods on top of a cable, the orbs in front of them, and we just link them using the wrench. I'm going to use four of them in order to get the energized ingot and the rest we're going to use it in order to upgrade steel blocks into the centrifuge blocks. That's going to take some time, but this one does not. It's really fast and our reactor is not keeping up with the power. It's okay. Anyways, that is going to be my job for the next, I don't know, one hour and a half, maybe. So I will bring you back when everything is done. Alright guys, it has been a while later and I have been grinding down like crazy. These are all the resources that I have gathered. And if I'm not wrong, these should be ready? 99%. It turns out I was wrong. Anyways, I also made 14 more ME storage components. They're just 1k, it's not very fancy. But until the crystals are getting ready, let us make the reactor. We already made the starter reactor which is generating us 1.3000 RF, we're skipping the basic and we're going for the hardened. Oh and by the way, this was your recommendation that I put a crafting station next to a crate. But it doesn't have to be a crate, it can also be a chest. Anyhow, let us do a very small calculation. I need one hardened capacitor per one block. I need 36 blocks, so I need 36 of you. And since I want to have two reactors, we need 72. There you go. And I need 18 casings. So we should be good to go with two reactors. Or at least that is what I think. I'm not sure. Yes, we have one reactor and we have 36 blocks left. So this guy is generating 9000 RF per tick. Great. Let us also skip the night and see if the crystals are ready. 100%. If it's 100%, then why is it still a seed? Do you need like five more minutes? I don't know. Since we are still waiting, let us set up the second reactor and try to get some decent cables from power. That transfers 5000 RF. Cool. Please be ready. Please. I really don't get this. 
I think they are growing. Yes. Yeah, one of the stacks is still growing, but we should be able to get our controller like so, which is a quest and you go over here. We also should get started with making the calculation processor so that we would be able to make the terminal. You I don't need. On the other hand, you are something I need. We also need to invest some of that pure certus quartz in order to make the storage housing. Is this the rest? Oh, it has to be vibrant. Ew. Vibrant is not a complicated recipe. We just need to add glowstone. So now you work, right? Yes. Our first storage housing. And I think instead of doing that one by one, we can just put a hopper, right? Yes, that is true. We have a few 1k storage cells, but I'm going to start making two 4k's so that we will have a decent amount of storage and the rest of our storage will be 1k for the moment. Anyways, we are not done yet. We still need to make the terminal, which is not that expensive. We also upgraded to crafting terminal and we need one cable. I can't believe we're done. <laughs> are we? Yes, we are done. Perfect. We just need a little bit more housing. There you go. But ladies and gentlemen, here is our applied energistic system. For easier transfer of items, can we make an import bus? Yes, that is incredibly cheap. And can I also have some acceleration cards? No. Oh, because I put them in there. I think for the moment we just go with two of them. This is great. I'm so happy. This crate is actually really neat because when you break it, it will keep its inventory. So this is how I'm going to transfer everything to our ME system. We're also not doing that bad on storage. Anyway guys, with getting the applied energistic system, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. From next episode, we don't have to rush anymore because we have what we want. We can focus on making an actual base and we can focus on automating stuff. Therefore, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.